My name is Jeff Morgan. I'm from Dallas, Texas. Today I'm here with Lisa Marshall and John O'Callaghan. Good to meet you both. Likewise. Thank you very much. Right back at you. You looks like you are fighting homelessness. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, yes. Yeah, so I started a nonprofit um, in 2020 to try to combat um, the legislative and the city and the state and the, um, the, the government systems that were keeping people homeless. Okay. And um, some of it is criminal justice issues. Some of it is city government. Some of it is legislation and uh, that is old and outdated that is keeping people um, in the homelessness system. John, can you tell me a little bit about your involvement? Sure. I, uh, I joined Fight Homelessness almost two years ago. I met Lisa and, uh, you know, I was just uh, wanted to do some volunteer work. And uh, I ended up uh, with Fight Homelessness. Uh, we identified this population, you know, that we're addressing with this bill. And uh, it's been, well... I mean, uh, as that pertains to the bill, but I mean, uh, for me, uh, that was just the start of, of identifying this problem, this crisis, you know, uh, that we have. It's destroying our families in this country, and, and it's, it's just a powerful, it's something I feel, you know, uh, I didn't particularly uh, get involved with fighting homelessness to get involved with... Uh, uh, dead broke dads you know but here we are you know it, it's real uh, we're destroying families by our policies our poor policies and uh, we're here to do something about it that's great to know you know and so many people and I know myself as well um, it isn't until you're either influenced by it personally or you have a friend or you see it face to face that you see what the problem is and you start to look at it and many people who have not experienced it head-on have simplified answers that actually create additional problems that we're trying to address. But Lisa, um, you have this House Bill, House Bill 3332, and I'd love you to tell uh, tell me about it a little bit more and anybody who's watching, tell us about this bill, why it's necessary, what got you to put it together, and where it stands right now, how we can help, because in listening to you earlier today, I think it's a very important bill, you're addressing a very important issue. Both you and John are addressing this issue, and uh, for my friends, I would say we need to get behind this, but please explain more to us. Okay. Thank you. So um, I got into this a couple of years ago when I was working with gentlemen on the streets or that had just been recently housed that um, asked me to help them get a job underneath the table. And, and I didn't even really know what underneath the table meant um, until I, met, I understood that it meant it can't be documented. And so once um, he said the reason why is because I get 50% of my paycheck taken out to cover my back child support, I'm like, 50%? There's no way they can do that. And sure enough, there is. <laughs> so. Um, these two, gen these three gentlemen that uh, are in the documentary that I'm producing on this as well, um, they have been forced to live on the streets or forced into horrific situations of having to uh, find other means to support themselves and their family um, because of the way the, the, the law reads right now. And the enforcement is the same enforcement whether you make one dollar or you make a million dollars. Um, you know, you have to have payroll withholding and when you get behind then, then all of a sudden you're going to have six percent interest. And that six percent and interest compounds quickly and it doesn't go away you know that the interest you have to continue paying until it's paid for and so what this bill would do is is help the 18 billion dollars with a B that the, the state of Texas has in child support arrears so in the state of Texas 1.1 million cases are tied to the 18 billion dollars in arrears but only 732 thousand cases are paying which means 393 thousand are not paying a penny 
and that means mothers and children that are going without any assistance other than probably Medicaid. Um, it means dads are going in and out of prison. It means that they're living in tents. They're living uh, back in jail. Um, and the, the burden is on the taxpayers. So we're picking up where dad is not able to because we have taken the ability for dad to be able to be present in the lives and to support his children. So this is a very specific bill that um, is, is for, it's more of a criminal justice reform and it would suspend child support while you're incarcerated if you're going to be incarcerated over 180 days um, and now your your order is is suspended you're not making the you're not having accruals the six percent accruals and then it also once you are released from prison you're going back into society it gives you six months to get back on your feet to get a job to get housing to get all the credentials you need whether it's your driver's license back because you, your driver's license is suspended when you're in arrears. Your um, licensing, so if you were a barber, you ha had a CDL license, if you were a contractor, all those licenses are gone. Um, and that's just the enforcement measure for all. But it really, really um, um, defeats the purpose for someone who is poor, underemployed, previously incarcerated, or uh, unemployed period and uh, it would give them the chance to to get back on their feet and get back in the game the the whole we're, we're losing the the whole um, issue of this is to support children and if we have taken that away from a total population and we're just keeping them in a system of going back into prison then we're not helping them or the child and we're we're creating a second generation of this. So now we have generations. We have already created a second generation of this. <laughs> oh yeah, and it, I mean it's getting you know our juvenile justice is is horrible right now because of, of the the amount that are entering into juvenile justice system. When when you have when you don't have a father in the house, re research has shown. Um, there's 18 million children, one in four live without a biological step or adopted father. And we know that they're four times greater with poverty, seven times more likely to become pregnant, more likely to abuse drugs and alcohol, and more likely to go to prison. So, you know, are we just going to continue to, to create this and, and not support a change. And the change is for all. It's not, it's, it's mothers, it's children, it's men that, and women that are incarcerated, and it's taxpayers. The, the burden is left on us. So we're the ones that are paying, um, you know, all of the, the, the support that happens when people become homeless. We're paying the SNAP, we're paying the, the housing, we're paying the, um, uh, medical, all of the, the, the Medicaid. So Medicaid and, and, and criminal justice are the two highest bills that we have in Texas, right? right? right. That's, our, that's our big debt. Um, and we're not doing anything to, to, to even surface that. But now, you talked about poverty just a little bit. So when it comes down to child support payments, uh, tell me a little bit about the people that owe the money. Are they not more likely to be people already in poverty? Under, okay, could you explain yes. that a little bit more? Yes, so um, out of that $18 billion, this is the thing that's just so shocking, 70% make under $10,000. 70 percent of the people that owe of money. the people that owe money so um so they could never pay it from the beginning they could never pay it from the beginning it's basically putting them into a life of financial bondage from the get-go that they will never ever emerge from never emerge from and then and then all the repercussions from them not being able to pay is is the 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 tragedy the mm -hmm. real tragedy but um and in Texas, what, what's so sad is Texas is going in the wrong direction. I mean, we, we're big in everything. We, do, we like to do things really big. And so we are the winners of, of the most debt. We surpassed California in 2019. So um, we're, we're, we're the winners. And uh, we have the most debt. We have the most cases. California, who has 
10 million more people than we do they only have 797,000 people that um, are in the system we have 1.1 million so you know it's just it's it's going the wrong direction and um, the only way that we can change this is through legislation um, and make sure that people get zero orders while they're in, in uh, incarcerated. Can you go through this step, the sure. cycle of prison death? Because I thought that was very important, very instructive, and yeah. it lays it out nice and simple what exactly is taking place here mm -hmm. in the state of Texas. So, step one, father goes to prison. He can't pay his child support due to lack of employment while incarcerated, and then now the six percent starts accruing. Tell us about the six percent. What is the six percent? Six percent interest is what happens when you are when you're behind and on the 31st day of the second month you you automatically get the six percent started to accrue. So now you have your debt plus the six percent interest and the the Attorney General's office estimates that the average debt uh, when they leave incarceration is about $36,000. So wow. imagine having $36,000. 6%. Yeah. Yeah. And so... And who does that money go to? It's supposed to go to the children, yeah. but the state is making the money. Gotcha. And actually, on that $36,000, if, if someone were paying $100 a month with no interest, they'll pay it off in 30 years. If... So it'll go from $36,000 to zero in 30 years. If they have 6% interest, that will climb in 30 years to almost $400,000. Wow. So you can see where why we're climbing to 18 billion because we just have so many people that have, you know, 1.1 million cases. Yeah. I mean, that's incredible. It almost seems to some degree that there's gotta be some type of fraud and corruption going on at the same time. I mean, this is, this is really, it almost looks like you, you don't want to say this about your state, but they are taking advantage and exploiting poor people who cannot pay. And again, once again, enslaving them for life. So it would appear to me. Well, it's definitely keeping them down. And that's the, the, uh, the name of my documentary is called Unreleased, because even though you may get out of prison, uh, you're never unreleased from the, the, the bondage of, of this child support. I mean, you, you, when you are given interest month after month for years after years that you're in prison or in and out of the prison system, um, you're still in prison. Right, absolutely. You know, you're, you're never out. Yeah. Oopsie. <laughs> and, and it's a very interesting concept even that you're talking about because the fact that you're in, in, in prison to begin with, um, you could make the, the strong Thank argument you. It's not really due to contempt of court. It's a debtor's prison. Yeah, it is a debtor's prison. It is a prison. debtor's prison, which had been abolished in the state, in the country of America. They've been abolished, supposedly, in the state of Texas. But we have just renamed them mm -hmm. so that we don't call them debtor's prisons anymore. We call them they're in jail for contempt of court. And as you said, in many instances, it is the fact that a father or a mother is unable to pay maybe they could get involved in some type of black market activities, illegal activities, and then we put them in jail because now they're involved in criminal activities. They pay child support that they could never pay from the beginning. Right, right. So, anyway, so that's step four I see here. So they, they re-enter re society, remember, you don't have a driver's license, a trade license, you have $36,000 in debt. Um, if you have a 40 hour uh, minimum paying job here in the state of Texas, you're bringing home 262.81 a week. Now take 50% of that, and who can live on that? Right. Who can live on 262? Forget and, that. And but in all likelihood, you may not even be making a child support payment. Oh, you're not. You're not. You go. You're falling further and further behind yeah. with more interest of the yeah. state. Yeah, and you're you're living in a tent. Afford to live. Yeah, yes. you're in a tent. You're and, in a tent. And, yeah, and 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 I think bringing it back because I'll let you continue on here. But your organization is fighting homelessness. We are creating homelessness by this system, and then we have to take additional measures to try to stop homelessness by criminalizing the homeless. Yes. I mean, this is absolutely insane, yeah. our state policy, but that's my, my opinion. And the taxpayers are the ones that and are, the, we're the, the yeah, we're the ones that are having to do it. But keep, keep continue, please. So the, the, um, 
the what would happen is um, three House Bill three 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 two would suspend for the time if they're going to be in in prison for more than 180 days it would suspend that and then again it would give them 180 days once they uh, are out because getting your licensing back um, whether it's your driver's license or your trade license it take it's a process it's not just like okay let's ask the DMV if we can have a, an ID again no it's get a form fill it out send it to the AG office have a court hearing to get your driver's license to your suspended driver's license back so I mean even the best uh, prison reentry can't get people up and sufficient in 30 days when they right. get out of prison. Right. You know, it's taking on average about six months is what the best have said, and that's the ones that have 95% uh, yeah. success rate. You know, uh, they're walking alongside them. They're bringing them back into their families. They're they're right. giving. They're making sure. Like we went to a brag breakfast today. And what does Bragg stand for? So we went to a Bragg breakfast with Rod Ministries. Rod Ministries is a wonderful pre prison reentry program that they walk with these men in prison all the way out and then on the other side. Mm -hmm. And they're helping them, um, you know, uh, sharpen their skills. Like two of the guys that we spoke with, one was in an electrical um, uh, school and the other one was in HVAC school. Right. And so... Um, now that's given him a leg up right you know giving him a chance we don't have enough of those out right. there right and i think that you, when you talked about the brag program you've also been involved in prison ministries as well mm -hmm. and uh, i used to actually teach in a prison so i saw some of these things and uh, the prison population often came from fatherless families to begin with mm -hmm. um, often fatherless by state mandate in a sense mm -hmm. um, but you know that re-entry into the into society if you don't have a strong faith-based institution to help out the recidivism is yeah. pretty high to begin it's, with it's huge when i did my prison ministry i i did mine at hutchins and um when i would ask so in each of the um, different cell blocks, there's about 52 men. And so sometimes they would combine and I, I might have two different cells. And I'd say, how many of you, you know, have children? Well, of course, everyone raise their hand. I go, okay, well, wait a minute. How many do not have children? So they say that about 60% of all people paying that are, that are in prison have children. Different states may have different um, uh, uh, higher percentages. Yeah, yeah. Eighty percent. But they, but they do say that about forty percent of those have a child support order. Okay. So um, you know, I do know that um, when I hear them coming up after we've done our ministry for that day, men come up and say, "I don't know how to be a father because." You know, all I know is is what I've I've learned, and I didn't have a father. So I mean, we're we're going on to second and third generations right, of this, right. and they don't they're they're trying. I mean, they they want so badly to get um, to the point where they are uh, responsible parents that are uh, making responsible children right. to to be in society, right. and um, you know, there's programs thank goodness that you know different um, uh, ministries that go in and help them with that but a lot of them don't know right you know they they uh, they want to know and they're not deadbeat dads they're they're dead broke dads right there's a big huge difference right. and I, I think every child should have support there's no ifs ands or buts you know dads need to, to support or if it's the other way it needs to be the mothers that are supporting you know whoever has the non-custodial parent role but the, the the thing that I would also like to interject here is that the best child support is to have both parents actively involved in a child's life yes the monetary aspect is a secondary aspect of it but too often what takes place in Texas is child support orders are given to the non-custodial parent so we must have a non-custodial parent to have a child support order and the best child support would be that both parents are actively involved right now we are actually helping to destroy families but we're collecting money and this is like how many children will we ruin and traumatize how many fathers and mothers will we ruin and traumatize in order to, to get our money but um, i just want to interject that yes nobody is saying 
um, no support for the children. But our system in the state of Texas is horrendous. It is a winner-take-all system, and it destroys families so that the state can brag about getting money and their efficiencies, which I'm sure you'll talk about later. Yes, um, even though we are the winner, winner, chicken dinner in the amount that we owe, we also are the winner in the amount of incentives that we get. So that the, what Texas does do very, very well is um, the, the federal government says for every one dollar that you spend on administration, you need to um, uh, collect at least five dollars and 24, 25 um, 525 something like that in the state of Texas we actually collect $14 and so the the next um, state with the highest incentive is California with 40 million so it we're off the chart yeah, and we're how 87 much 87 billion or 87 <laughs> 85 million. million yeah yeah compared yeah. to 40 million for California so we are we are we are collecting and we're dispersing. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, but our orders are, we are bringing more middle class and upper class and higher paying orders. Right. That's why we're able to have that high incentive. Why don't we use some of that incentive to help um, fund or, or help relieve some of this pressure off of those that can't? Right, and the other thing is that maybe we need to start to look at these child support orders a little bit differently. I yes. think our whole system, like you said, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Um, other states have a shared income model. Mm -hmm. We have a loser pays all model. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our guidelines are sometimes exorbitantly high for people. And what may be very, e very easily managed for one person can bankrupt another person. Yep. And especially when you're talking about the, 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 the people that you're referring to as mm -hmm. well. Um, but go and ahead. I think even mothers, um, you know, in the system, the system is so hard to maneuver through. So, um, you know, uh, poor mothers that are going and asking for assistance uh, don't know that when they sign over their rights for the state of Texas to now, um, you know, collect all of their child support, that they're not really going to get anything. Um, you know, they, they are supposed to pass on a certain amount to the mothers, but if, if the state's not getting anything, they're not passing anything on, mother now thinks deadbeat dad's not paying. Well, deadbeat dad is dead broke. You know, it's a difference if you have the means and you're choosing not to support your child versus not having the means, but really having the desire to support your child. We have taken that away from poor families. So right now you have this bill, House Bill 3332. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about where it stands right now, who your sponsors are, because unfortunately, and everyone knows that I am a Christian conservative Republican, um, the Republican part is becoming a little bit wishier, honestly, right now because some of our Republicans, I believe, are betraying the families for the sense of money. But I am a Christian conservative. Um, I, I, unfortunately, right now, I don't see Christian conservatives doing the right thing, what I would consider to be the right thing when it comes to child support. What I see them doing is wanting to punish, 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 mm -hmm. and then mislabel a dead broke person as being a dead beat person mm -hmm. and that has ramifications as well for the children mm -hmm. and for the future of our society but could you comment upon who your sponsors are right sure. now because my guess right now is that you probably don't have any republicans sponsoring it but i don't know <laughs> no i don't uh, uh representative carl sherman is is carrying my bill um and it's actually going into the juvenile justice and family issues uh committee well it would seem like it almost it, it could almost go into the juvenile just or it could, well like the corrections issue but i guess juvenile justice family issues so Anything, if you mention the word child support, that's where it's going to go. Yeah. So, but anyway, go Even ahead. though it, it, it's, we're talking specifically to corrections here. Right. I mean, basically trying to make sure that what happens while incarcerated, and that's very, you know, corrections uh, related, but um, he is, he is carrying the bill. Um, and, you know, this is not new. Um, Representative Dutton, um, there's been other uh, representatives that um, Senator West has worked really hard on the rights of incarcerated men and poor men um, also and um, they they presented it in 2015, 2017, 19, 21 finally West uh, was able to get 
what Obama passed in 2016 that you can't um, um, have, in, uh, it's not intentional when men go to prison because they're trying to get out from paying their child support because that's what it used to be. Right. And so now uh, when Obama said on his way out, he, he was able to get that passed federally, but then uh, Trump said, well, let's just let the states uh, migrate that legislation in their state bills as they see. And um, it took us till 2021 <laughs> to get it in our in our legislation. So, um, you know, we're, we're way behind the time, hence why we are the winner in the debt. And um, last year in 2021, all states had some kind of drop. Um, 14 states had increases, and nine of those states were red states. Yeah, it's so amazing. Um, and what is Texas rate among those? We're number one. Number one. Okay, <laughs> we do everything better in Texas. And we do it bigger, bigger, <laughs> bigger and better. better. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, but I would love to see Texas do the right thing here. Yes. I mean, there, there's there's plenty of option to turn this around. Um, you know, um, just just giving men the the zero order while they're incarcerated is huge to debt reduction. Right. It's huge, right. and then giving men the the opportunity to not carry this on to a second generation right. and keep this family down in poverty yeah. is huge yeah. and um, I just you know pray and hope that they do the right thing yeah so let me speak just a moment to the Christian conservative Republican party in particular um, this is a very important issue from my perspective I got involved with a lot of this stuff because family is the essential the crucial element of our society. Family is the essential unit. And too often government policies destroy families. So I would encourage the Republican, especially the Christian conservative legislators who are saying we've got to punish these people with more child support. That's really what you're doing. You're punishing families, you're punishing children. And to the Democrats on the other side, um, I came from a place where I was originally a Democrat, and there's a lot of policies that I agree with you on. Blue-collar conservative. I think that we can work together on a lot of these issues. And to be honest with you, uh, Representative Dutton, I've read your bills on child support reform. I'm with you. I would love to be able to advocate for you. Uh, Senator West, I'd love to talk with you because I think this is a huge issue. And not to make it racial, but it does tend to, to plague the... Uh, the African-American, the black, the brown community, whatever, even more than the white community. But we are destroying families left, right, and center. We are profiting off of the destruction of families. And I think that we need to have some good people to step up. And uh, there's a few people, um, you know, Senator Angela Paxton, uh, wonderful lady. She did a great job passing a bill unanimously out of the State Affairs Committee just recently talking about issues that would help to rebuild families. Maybe Senator Paxson is a person you could talk with. Senator Paxson, if, 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 if Lisa does come to talk with you, know that I sent her. But I mean, I know that there are people that mean well, but I think there's a big difference between their intentions and the unintended consequences. And I think a little bit what you're seeing on your end, especially fighting homelessness, are some of the consequences that we've seen from well-intentioned but poorly enacted and poorly crafted bills. If you have any final comments on that, I'd love to hear it. You know, <clears throat> thank you. My, my biggest thing is um, um, older, outdated legislation just needs to be looked at again. It, we, we need to take a really uh, good look at the, the amount of debt the people that it's involving and um, and turn this around um, if we continue on this and keep it the way it is we're not going to go the other direction we're going to remain to go up in our debt and up in our prison population up in the Medicaid and and the burden is still the going to be the crime homeless. everything you know I mean everyone doesn't even want to talk about the fact that we're the fourth growest state with homelessness um, you know, our homeless popu population is, is um, you know, r reaching high, high numbers. And, um, our, you know, we don't have enough housing in, in the state of Texas. I mean, there, it's just, it's, it's just one, it's, it's one, one pitfall after the other. But little small steps in order to move the needle in the right way and uh, get these families back to 
um, healthy healthy relationships, healthy ability to um, be be in the game. I mean, they should, yeah. they need to be in the game. Yeah. Hey, John, I want to ask you for a comment here too, because yeah. one of the, one let me just one of the things that you mentioned earlier when we talked, you had mentioned that you see men that are less than 50 years old, but they almost look like they're 80 because they have been been so broken and battered and beaten and abused by the system. Could you maybe address that a little bit as well? Sure. I mean, think of the expense of that. We're talking about 50-year-old men that are like 80 years old on the inside need uh, need new livers, need new kidneys, kidneys and good gosh, heart valves. And I mean, they're a mess. And, and it's costing the taxpayers a ton of money. And it's just a waste. And it's also destroying families. What I've seen as well, and this is from a personal level, is that the people that will have to pay child support and child support for years on end, often exorbitant rates, and when they come down time to retire, they cannot do so. So it's not just that they've been impoverished throughout their lives, but even when they should be entering the retirement years, they're again living hand to mouth. Some of them are getting second jobs, uh, working at various places, doing anything that they can just to try to keep a roof over their head. So now we're abusing our, abusing our elderly population at the same time. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. Yep. Yep. Okay. So listen, um, I want to thank you both so much. I'm going to give you one, one final chance here if you want to, to, to say anything. But again, from my perspective, this is a huge, huge issue. We have created uh, generations in which fatherlessness and broken families are acceptable. They're considered an alternative form of family. This should, when I was growing up, I remembered that it was very seldom that you even saw divorced families. Now my family went through divorce. I was the oddity at that time. But most families did not go through this. And the, the foundational unit of the family needs to be strong. Our legislature is not addressing family issues, obviously. And what they are trying to do then is punish other people that have been partly the result of traumas that they've caused. But anyway, I want to give you the last, the last one final moment here to say something, uh, get people to support your bill. We want to be behind you about your movie, your documentary as well. We want that once it's out. We want people to be watching that as well. But I'm going to go with John first, and I'm going to finish up with you, Lisa. Please support us. You can go to fightinghomelessness.org and... Uh, you know, see the work we're doing. Uh, if you would, you know, call your uh, representative, you know, and, uh, you know, get behind us, please. We're trying to save the American family. You know, it's it's a great cause. Yes, um, like he said, um, um, fightinghomelessness.org. Um, and we will also have a, a link on there where you can reach out to your state rep or state senator. Um, it it um, has a little... Um, section in the the email that you can send directly to them that talks about the bill and supporting the bill uh, that would definitely help and um, just um, we we would love to have any any other support that you that you want to offer to this cause and anything that will help in homelessness so thank you very much for having me today I appreciate it well, thank you for contacting me. I mean, this is the first time I've met you in person. Uh, we did talk a few times on the phone and so on, and I want to thank you for your persistence. I've been traveling and busy, but thank you so much. Uh, for anybody who's watching, uh, I would recommend, and I hope that you do follow up with this, fighting homelessness. Uh, we fight homelessness. One of the great ways we do it is by strengthening families, by preserving families, by keeping families intact, and making sure that both parents are actively involved in their children's lives children have rights and children have rights to both parents mm -hmm. and shame on us that we let the state cast a parent out of a child's life so that the state can make more money anyway that's my perspective on it thank you so much for the work that you're doing thank you so much for the prison ministries you've been involved with uh, all the best to you and please keep us updated if there's anything we can do to help um, we would like to see this legislation pass as well thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you.